Are you struggling to compute date differences between rows in your data frame while considering different treatment groups? You're not alone. This is a common challenge for many working with R, especially when dealing with complex data sets. I understand how frustrating it can be when your data doesn't behave as expected. You might have a data frame with multiple treatments and dates, and you need to calculate the differences in months between them. It can feel overwhelming, but don't worry, we will tackle this together. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked how to compute the difference in months between treatment dates in their data frame. They provided a sample data frame with treatment IDs, start dates, and valid dates. Sound familiar? Let's dive into the details. To understand the issue, we need to recognize that when treatment IDs are the same, we calculate the difference using the valid dates. However, when a new treatment appears, we switch to using the start dates. This logic can get tricky, especially at the end of the data frame. And stay tuned. At the end of this video, I will share a pro tip that will simplify your data manipulation tasks in R. To address the user's issue, we will first modify the existing loop to incorporate a check for the last observation of the previous treatment group. This will ensure that when a new treatment appears, we can correctly reference the last valid observation from the previous group. Next, the user should implement a variable to track the last valid observation index. This will help in determining which previous observation to reference when the treatment ID changes. Now, let's adjust the logic inside the loop. When the treatment ID changes, the user should check if the valid date matches the last valid date of the previous treatment. If it does, reference the last observation from that group instead. Finally, the user should test the modified loop with their data to ensure that the calculations for the break months, last one, and last two variables are now accurate. This will confirm that the adjustments made are functioning as intended. Fun fact, did you know that R was created in the mid-1990s and has since become one of the most popular programming languages for data analysis? Just like your data, R has evolved to handle complex tasks more efficiently. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative solution provided by another user involves using the dplyr package in R. They suggest utilizing functions like lag and if-else to simplify the computation of date differences. The method calculates a comparison date based on whether the treatment ID matches the previous row. Then it computes the difference in days between this comparison date and the previous valid date, converting it into months by dividing by 30. That's it for that response. Let's explore another one. An alternative approach suggested by a user involves modifying the for loop to account for changes in treatment ID. When treatment ID differs from the previous observation, the calculation should use the start date of the current observation and the valid date of the last observation from the previous treatment ID. The user also explains how to find the indices of new observations using the lag function from the MISC package. This helps identify where treatment ID and valid change allowing for accurate calculations. For the last one variable, the user suggests accessing the desired value using the last obs index to ensure accurate comparisons when treatment ID changes. Lastly, for the last two variable, the user believes that simply having a new treatment ID is sufficient to use the break months value without needing a different valid date. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always keep track of your last observation index when working with group data. This simple practice can save you a lot of headaches in the long run. And there you have it. With these adjustments, you should be able to compute the date differences accurately in your data frame. Remember, practice makes perfect, so keep experimenting with your R code. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more tips and tricks.